Today we're gonna to make pasta carbonara from scratch. First, we start with semolina flour. Now, pasta carbonara is super easy to make the dough, actually. It's gonna be 100 grams of semolina flour ground very fine to one egg. So you can do one egg, two eggs, three eggs, however much you want, just do 100 to one. We are going to do two eggs. So we're gonna measure out 200 grams of flour. See, there's just over 100. So you kind of get an idea of how much that is. If you want leftovers, do 200. I kind of just do a little bit shy, just in case the size of the eggs. It's to one regular, like large egg, not extra large, not a medium egg. If you like to have a bit more yolk, you can do a bit more yolk. This process is grinding. We're gonna use a Vitamix grinder. We've got the large container. I like the large container because it does both wet and dry ingredients pretty darn well. And what I really like about it is once you're all done with everything, you throw it right back in here with your eggs and then you just pulse it and it makes a dough. It's super easy. Okay, let's turn this on. Now you don't wanna actually do everything in one shot. You don't wanna put it all in because it's gonna to be too much for you to get a good fine grind. So you can do it in stages. I usually do about a quarter to half a cup at a time. Put on that lid, we're gonna turn it on, crank it to high, and we're gonna let it run for one minute. Watch it spin, spin, all the way around. It gets finer and finer as time goes down. Now when you open this, uh, don't just open it right away, get all, all excited and everything. It's a big puff of flour. So you kind of want to like knock it a little bit, see how it comes out like that. It's not steam, it's actually flour. And so we're gonna take it, we're gonna put it in our bowl right here. Ooh! Now, I want to show you. Heart. It's a heart. It's a heart. It is a heart. Look at it, that, it's a heart. Now you can see the difference between the two. Now semolina flour is a, a nice flour. If you were to go and buy pasta dough, like good proper Italian doppio, it's called doppio because it's double zero, it's the finest you can get. It's typically semolina flour. Now, semolina flour feels, when you buy it from a store in bulk, it feels like a very fine cornmeal. But when you grind it, it's just fine flour. So you can see the difference. All right, in we go, round two. And we keep doing this until we've got all of our flour ground. Sometimes it takes uh, three or four times, depending on how much flour you did. For us, it's gonna take probably four times. I love scotch. Scotchy, scotch, scotch. And now we gotta put in two sexy looking eggs. So you just crack these. In they go. All right. Now you can't see the eggs anymore, but you know what's in there. Now I like to pulse it. Just kind of get it started. Then you can turn it on and just go to three. And that'll get everything all nice mixed up, as you can tell. Now, if you do need a little bit more moisture, you can always add water, you can add oil, however you want. But I think we actually might be okay here. So if you're gonna put your fingers in here and, and pull stuff out with a Vitamix machine, specifically, uh, that's okay because you aren't gonna cut yourself on these blades. They're actually dull. So don't be afraid to do that. Okay, we're gonna knead this. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a kneading. Looks like it needs a little bit more moisture, but not much. All right, get this kneaded. Now, once you're done kneading this, you're gonna let it rest, wrapped in about, uh, wrapped in cellophane or plastic wrap for about 30 minutes in the fridge. And you'll just let it, all the gluten and egg kind of get together and become one. They will morph together. We're gonna make a little pasta, yummy. Wow, 
while the dough is getting its uh, resting time in, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get everything prepped up for the sauce in the pasta carbonara, which is super easy actually. You're basically taking bacon, you're cutting it up, then you're going to render it down. In that, you will take the rendered bacon fats with cheese and egg, and that will be your sauce. It's delicious, you'll see what happens. All right, gonna take some eggs, crack it in, in they go. So many yummy eggs. See so you stealing <laughs> stuff over there. Quality control. Stealing cheese. Now I'm doing a little bit of Parmesan, a little bit of Romano. You could do all Parmesan, you could do, you know, a hard cheese. Parmesan is traditionally, yeah, see, there we go. That's the consistency. See how it's like, just thicker. Almost like a paste. Yeah, perfect. Pasty. All right, now we're gonna do some baking. We're going to use five or six pieces of bacon. Now, because I'm using sea salt pepper bacon, traditionally I would just recommend using straight bacon, but this is freaking amazing. It's absolutely delicious. But, traditionally I would salt the water a lot, but because this has sea salt in the bacon, I'm actually gonna dial back the amount of salt that I put in that, uh, that pasta water, because you traditionally want to have pasta water that's about the same saltiness as the ocean. However much salt that is, but if you ever jumped into the ocean and you tasted it, it's pretty salty. There is our salty pepper bacon. Delicious. You don't want to like fry the bacon, that's not the point of this. You really want to just kind of slow cook it in a sense so where it does render because when you render fats, like you, you're keeping the fats. If you do too high of a heat and you fry this, you're gonna evaporate too much of your fats and then it's just gonna brown and then it's just, it's a whole mess. You kinda of wanna do a little slower cook. Oh my goodness. Hi. Oh my gosh. Dough. Look at that. All right, so the dough's been sitting for about 30 minutes. See how it's got to like, like glisten to it? It's got that moisture. I think we're actually pretty solid on moisture. Now I like to cut this thing into minimally quarters. I'm using the Cuisinart machine over here. You can see that. Ooh, look at this. Yum. So this definitely has some pliability, pliability to it. So it can stretch, which is great. Right, we want to see that gluten. Yum! Is that not awesome looking? That's slowly rendering down and it's gonna be amazing. And if you guys hear the music in the background, it's because I love cooking with music. And since I am cooking tonight, we got some quasi jazzy Italian, nah, it's probably not Italian, whatever. Jazzy music. It's good.
Not too shabby. A little on the uh, raggedy side. If you wanted to clean up those edges, you could. It should be like this. Oh, so pretty. Look, a straight edge. It's not really that much waste. And it just looks so much nicer. What settings were you using on the machine? So I start at one and then I go to about a five. Now a five on this machine is a five. Uh, if you have a pasta maker, if you got like a hand pasta maker, it might be a little different. I put the flour on so it doesn't stick to itself. If you have these and they're a little bit too wet, they'll start to stick and it is a royal pain in the ass to get them apart. So you really don't want to get them sticking to themselves. So a little bit of flour in between is always nice. See how much different that is? This is what happens when you kind of get a little bit better of a start, and then you get that. This is wasn't me folding it well enough, and this was kind of a better fold setup. I, I can flower this and fold over. There we go. On to the next one. Normally, with pasta carbonara, I like to do a, uh, like an angel hair style pasta. There's a better term for it, I don't know it. But uh, we're actually gonna go with a hand cut pasta, kind of like a, a tagliatelle. So it's, it's closer to say like a fettuccine size. Probably gonna go about that. So somewhere between a tagliatelle and a parpadella. Parpadella is like the real thick ones. Uh, we just kinda wanna change it up. That's what's nice about pasta, you can do whatever you want and it doesn't matter because you are your own uh, chef. Yeah, that's a good size right there. And then I'll flour these, make sure that they're still good to go. I think they're pretty good though. I think I floured them enough beforehand that we don't have to worry about it too much, but I just like to be a little bit extra. Just in case. There we go, look at that, yum yum. How fun is that? Cool. I'll add a little variation here. Great, we have our pasta. Now it doesn't, it might not seem like a lot of pasta here, but trust me, it's a lot of pasta. When you cut it really thin, then it's, the amount looks a lot larger, but when it's real thick like this, it's not that much, but you're, you're not gonna use a whole lot for a person. Like this is probably a pretty decent amount for an actual plating, especially when you have like a salad with it, because this will expand a little bit in the water. What's nice about fresh made pasta is it cooks extremely fast. Uh, this will probably take about three minutes to cook because it's a little thicker. But if you have it really, really thin, it can take 90 seconds to cook. It is very, very fast. All right, pasta going in. Now I know a lot of people say put olive oil into your water. No, don't do that with fresh pasta. You definitely do not need to do that. Uh, Specifically with pasta carbonara, you don't want to do that because you actually want the juices and, and everything to stick to the pasta. So don't put in olive oil. Our dog is a smoker. 
a good dog though. Take a look at that. Nice and right. Yummer. So that tells me it's very, very close to being done. Let's see where we're at. Not done yet. Wow, that was very close. <clears throat> Let me check it now. That's a really good one. When you cook enough pasta, you can feel kind of the texture through the tongs. And it really depends on your tongs. Rubber tongs, it's gonna have a different feel than straight metal tongs. But you can kind of feel that, the hardness as it slips through the tongs. And I can feel that it's getting slightly softer. And it also falls a little differently too. Now, you literally just take it and pull it right in. Now I have this off, but it's still warm. I will say this much, the thicker pasta, or wider pasta and not thicker, the wider pasta is a lot easier to, to see what's taken out of the pot and what's not taken out. Now once you feel like you got things mixed up pretty well, this actually looks really great so far. Now we're gonna add in the cheese. Now, the reason I don't have any heat on this is because when you add in the cheese and eggs, if it's too hot, you will overcook it and you're making scrambled egg. That's nasty. So you don't want it to be hot, hot. But you want it to be hot enough that it's not gonna be like cold when you serve it. So, uh, this is always a good time to make sure you have all of your stuff ready and if you have pastas and things like that, just because when you put it in here and you mix it up, then you want to quickly get it onto your plate. So, I'm actually going to pull these out. These will be ready to go. We're going to add in our delicious egg and cheese. go. Try and get all of that in there. Yeah. And then you just stir it around. Kind of, not necessarily a toss, but just mix it all together. Now one of the key ingredients that I didn't really talk about in here is pepper. Lots of pepper. So that's why you see all these little black dots in there. That's all pepper. It is delicious. Just about there. Think we need any more liquid in this? A smidge. A smidge. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That was a good call. Perfect. I think this looks good. What do you think? Beautiful. All right, time served. Then, pepper. And 
jeez. Perfect. And that is pasta carbonara. 